Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. Now, I don't want Fully Charged to become the Tesla fanboy channel, but we have to face facts. There has been a bit of news about Tesla lately. Uh, just very recently, Tesla launched the Model 3, and this news actually got into the mainstream media. It was actually in things called newspapers. Some of you older viewers will remember newspapers. It was a way of communicating data using dead trees the Tesla Model 3. Now, those of you, very few of you, I imagine, watching this, not conversant with the meteoric history of Tesla Motors, uh, the company was founded in 2003 in California uh, with, a, with a very modest plan, and that was to completely change the world. Now, they initially produced a high-performance two-seater electric sports car, the Tesla Roadster, and they sold enough of those, it got them enough money to then start making the Tesla Model S. Uh, and they produced loads of those, and their offshoot of that, the Tesla Model X, and they produced loads of those, and they sold thousands of them, and that's what gave them enough money and credibility to get to the point where they could then launch what was the original plan, the Tesla Model 3, a car that is described as an affordable car for the masses, a mass-produced car at much less cost. Now, a Tesla Model S starts at about £60,000. So it's definitely not a cheap car. The Tesla Model 3 will start at around £30,000. We're not absolutely sure of the price yet, but we will find out very soon, I'm sure. So that was their plan. And what, was, what has been really interesting to watch is the impact that this one really small car company has had on the entire automotive industry. The Model 3 was launched with enormous amounts of fanfare and hoopla and it was all marvellous and everyone was excited and people in this country got up in the middle of the night to watch it and it was all wonderful and then we suddenly saw this new car and it was all, oh my God, it's the new Tesla Model 3, do I like it? It's got only one display in the middle of the dashboard, it's got no speedometer in front of the driver, oh my God, I'll hate it, I'll love it, I can't stand it, it's brilliant, it's horrible. All that stuff happened in the first minute and a half of it being revealed. But what was extraordinary was the number of people who put down a deposit to buy one. So if you paid $1,000 in America or £1,000 here, which is a lot more than $1,000, yeah, we always get short shrift in this country, uh, then you could order your car now and you'd be first in the queue for when they're made. And what is extraordinary is since it was launched a couple of days ago, uh, more than 276 thousand people around the world have put down their thousand dollars, thousand pounds, thousand euros deposit. That we're talking billions of pounds have gone into Tesla Motors. And here's the important thing. No one in the world outside of Tesla has driven the car. No members of the press, no members of the public. Very, very few people have actually seen it. And yet 276,000 people have said, yes, I want one. Now that has really caught the attention of the automotive industry as a whole. No one queues up outside a, a showroom of, a, of another car manufacturer to put the deposit down on a car that they won't possibly see before the end of 2017 if they're lucky and probably in this country more likely the middle of 2018. It's unprecedented. It truly is remarkable. I'll go even further. It's barking mad. It seems no one really expected an electric car to receive such an amazing response, especially when oil prices are as low as they've been in a decade. Because what this really shows is people aren't buying electric cars because they're cheaper to run, which they are, or they're less environmentally damaging, which they are. No, they're buying them because they're better. They're also buying them because the people who decide to buy them are generally seeing a slightly bigger picture. There's one really interesting fact that illustrates this. It's been noticed that whenever people get solar panels, loads of them then want to get an electric car. And whenever people get an electric car, loads of them want to get solar panels. The demand for both those things is constantly rising and the cost of both those things is constantly falling. In fact, the demand for the Tesla Model 3 is so enormous that Tesla are now planning on building a new factory in Europe. And where might they build this factory? This is so bizarre, you could not make this up. The French government has just suggested that Tesla build their factory in a disused nuclear power station. Now, according to recent reports from France, Ségolène Royal, who is the French Minister of the Environment and Energy, and I actually love her, uh, offered the building, which is located in Alsace, to Elon Musk's company. Elon, come over here. Use our old nuclear power station for your Tesla cars. It will be very, very safe when we have cleaned it up which may take some time. <laughs> She's gorgeous, Segaline. Sorry, it's just me. I've got a bit of a thing for mature and rather fierce French women. 
I'll get over it. So what do we know about this car? Well, it's going to cost in excess of £30,000 when it finally comes out in 2017. And for that, you get a five-seater sedan with a range of around 215 miles, they're saying. I would say that's a realistic, realistic, proper, real-world range of like 190 to 200 miles. Uh, but this bit is really important. It will be supercharger enabled. Now, what does that mean? That means that this car can use the superchargers that are being installed all over the world at the moment. And that really makes a big difference. Now, to make Tesla's 500,000 Model 3s a year would require a rather a lot of batteries. Uh, currently, the entire global capacity for battery manufacture could not meet this demand. So Tesla is now nearing completion on what they've described as their Giga factory in Sparks, Nevada. This one plant, which is going to be, I think, that everyone's claiming the largest single building on the face of the planet in terms of its footprint. It's just huge, completely solar powered. This one plant will literally double the global production of lithium ion batteries and allow the company to meet its targets. So we've all got a long wait until we get to go in a Model 3. Yours truly is not going to be sitting behind the wheel of a pressed version of the car until I reckon mid 2018. I wonder what I'll do. Oh dear, because that's when my lease has run out on the Tesla Model S. I know what I'll do. I'll lease a massive diesel SUV and sit outside a primary school with the engine ticking over for hours while I make a couple of calls. <laughs> Not really. And finally, if you have supported Fully Charged on Patreon, I am enormously grateful to you. Thank you so much. It's turned making this show from a, a you know, an interesting struggle into a, a challenging joy. It's brilliant and it's, it's made it possible for us to keep making more episodes. So if you haven't uh, uh, supported the programme on Patreon, don't feel guilty. There's no pressure at all. But if you want to, the link's just down there. It's very easy. Just click the link. It takes you through to the Patreon page. It's very straightforward. Lots of people have told me how easy it is. First time they've used Patreon and it's very simple. I've used it before. I think it's a brilliant system. And if you haven't subscribed, well, please do, as we're releasing a new show every week. And I would hate it if you were to miss some of the fully charged goodness heading your way. That's all for now. If you have been, thank you for watching. I regularly hear from people who would love an electric car, but say they can't afford one. I mean, you could describe buying a new car as insane, but have you thought about leasing one? Well, that's what I do with my Tesla Model S. It's on a lease for three years. Now, it's worth checking out Drive Electric. That's who I lease my car through, and they're really nice people. And they're really easy to deal with. Now, this isn't a paid advert or anything like that. I just want to support what Drive Electric are doing because they are getting electric cars to a lot of people who could never afford to buy one. It's worth checking out Drive Electric.